those have been following my uh, uh, my commentaries for some uh, some time know that uh, uh, I uh, I never talk about the consensus unless it completely agrees with me. Um, so today I thought I might talk about the uh, some elements of the consensus outlook for uh, uh, our part of the world, uh, the Indo-Pacific, and uh, why it uh, tells us that we're in a completely different part of the world than we've been reading about. Uh, we, we read about uh, and hear about how Europe is going into, uh, is in a dark crisis and is going into deep recession. And we, and we hear about how a recession in the United States is, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, I increasingly, I mean, if it hasn't already happened, you know, it's, it's, it's threatening. Uh, that's what we're told. But when we look at the, the outlook for the part of the world we actually live in, uh, which is called the Indo-Pacific, uh, we find we live in a completely different world uh, where growth is incredibly powerful and expected to remain so, uh, not just this year, uh, but uh, in the years ahead. And that generates a really, really different look for Australian exports than we would have if we were living somewhere in Central Europe or we were living somewhere in... Uh, in Wisconsin or something like that. Um, and so I thought I'd talk a little bit about the numbers and, and what I think is happening. I think we're going through a period where the major growth centre of the world is moving from China to the Indo-Pacific. Uh, the simple way of looking at that is to look at the uh, United Nations forecast. There's a publication uh, called Population Prospects, which is put out by the by the UN. And uh, it's really good to look at if you want to have charts to show to people. It gives you population uh, charts of, of demographic shifts uh, between now and, and the end of the century for every country. That's in this, I think there's 198 countries that are members of the United Nations. Uh, and the two uh, most interesting charts are the two biggest countries. And the two biggest countries are China and India. And uh, China and India both have uh, the enormously large population of 1.4 billion people each. So there's 1.4 billion people in China and 1.4 billion people in India. But what actually happens in both of those countries is completely different. Uh, what happens is that uh, over the balance of this century, what you see in population prospects is that the Chinese population has peaked already and it's going to fall rather massively by about 600 million people between now and the end of the century. And it ends the century with about 800 million people. Uh, India, on the other hand, it's 200 million people. So it's going to wind up at the end of the century with a population twice as large as that of China. And what that means is that economic growth in India and the countries that are surrounding it and associated with it is vastly higher prospectively right now in this decade when this shift is happening, when you move from uh, growth being centred around the Indian economy uh, and away from growth being centred in the Chinese economy. Uh, and uh, you can see this in some of the numbers uh, in the consensus forecast. For example, uh, this year, uh, the Indian economy, whereas the Chinese economy is expected to grow by 3.3%. I've got 2.8% of my forecast. But anyway, the consensus is 3.3%. Uh, the Indian population is, the Indian economy is growing at 7.1%, more than twice as fast as China. And uh, next year, uh, the Indian economy is expected to grow by 6%. The Malaysian economy this year is growing by 7.7%, and next year is expected to grow by about 4.5%. The Philippines economy is growing by 6.7% this year, and next year is growing at 5.6%. And the Vietnamese economy, when there's 140 million people in Vietnam, uh, the Vietnamese economy is growing at 7.5% this year, and is expected to grow by 6.3%. Uh, next year. And all of these countries, these rapidly growing countries, have rapidly growing electrification. 
which means they have an increasing demand for energy, which means they have an increasing demand for coal, and they have an increasing demand for LNG. And it so happens that Australia, uh, which is close by, uh, is the world's largest uh, exporter of coal by value and uh, is, is always in the top two uh, of uh, world exporters by value of, of uh, LNG. So you've got, we're in living in this area, surrounded by these countries, which have these very rapid growth rates, which are going to be the centre of world growth prospectively, and we are the people who supply uh, energy to those countries. So it's no real surprise that the consensus view for the Australian economy is that we're going to grow almost 4% this year, 3.9% growth, and 2.1% next year uh, uh, when, uh, when we slow down. And, um, and that's just the background to why it is that uh, in a country like Australia, which, can, which uh, usually has current account deficits, we usually uh, work on this economic principle of importing skilled migrants and importing debt to, you know, uh, to support them. Uh, but because we're living in this place called the Indo-Pacific, which is boom central right now, uh, the Australian current account surplus, which means the current account is just is the balance of trade plus us paying all the debt for all the money we owe for all the things we've borrowed for the last couple of hundred years to invest in the Australian economy. Our surplus last year was 51.4 billion US dollars. Our surplus this year is 32.3 billion US dollars, and our surplus next year uh, will be 14.6 billion US dollars. So, and this is because we're in this strong uh, export position. Household consumption this year is growing in Australia at 6.5%. Uh, should it also grow by 2.4%, even though everybody says the housing sector is going to hell. Uh, building approvals this year, 196,000. They're still expected to be 183,000 uh, next year. Uh, the balance of trade uh, in Australian dollars, 130 billion surplus this year, uh, and still 91 billion surplus next year in Australian dollar terms. Uh, and um, uh, the current account I've talked about. So uh, the outlook for Australia is is not the same as Europe, and it's not the same as the United States. We happen to be living in one of the strongest growing areas of the world, the Indo-Pacific, which is moving, which is becoming, taking over from China as the growth, as growth central for the world economy. And they want our exports, particularly our energy exports, and I'll talk a bit more about energy and the real prices of things um, in terms of uh, coal, and, uh, coal and oil and um, natural gas when I speak to you again next week. Thank you.